Welcome to using Dynamo with Python, getting and setting a parameter. This is a very basic wall. It's got a instance-based parameter here of SOMID. It's got a number in there. It's got a type-based uh, parameter here. And I'm going to go ahead and use Visual Studio's uh, 2017 with, um, with Python to import the CLR and I'll import my system. I'll go ahead and add my uh, Revit API. Uh, and then from the Revit API, I want to include the Autodesk Revit um, database. And I'll just go ahead and import the whole database in there. Um, and then I'll go ahead and add the reference. And then I'll get the, uh, the UI. And I'll go ahead and uh, add one more reference here it'll be for the uh, Revit services, um, which is the document. And uh, I'll go ahead and import Revit services. And from um, the Revit service, um, I want to get the, persist the persistent um, uh, document manager. And also from Revit service, um, I want to get my transaction so I can um, start a transaction. Uh, so I'll get the transaction manager. And that's to uh, make an exchange with Revit if I'm doing something. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and get the uh, proto geometry. Um, and then that'll be from Autodesk uh, Design Script. And I'll just go ahead and grab everything. So the next part here is um, getting the current document. And what I'll do is I'll get the document manager. And I'll get the instance of the current uh, database document. So it's current DB document. Um, and then I'm going to get the uh, application, which will be also from the document manager. And I'll grab the instance of the current UI uh, application, and it'll be the application itself. Then I'll go ahead and get the uh, UI app. And I'll get the document manager, the instance of the current UI application. Here's a, um, an even easier and faster way of getting um, the application is once you've got the UI app, um, you can actually get the app or the application um, just by already getting the UI.app and just getting the application, which saves you a little bit of code there, but just a heads up. So the first um, element that's going to be sent in through uh, Dynamo will be uh, the um, element or a list of elements. So it'll be my first item of zero. And then a, a string parameter of the parameter name uh, will be the second um, piece of information. So, um, yeah. so I'm going to generate the uh, stuff I'm going to send out from uh, the Python node and that'll be an empty out list for now um, and I'm going to generate type uh, uh, to get the uh, type parameter so I need to get the family type uh, so I'll just create an empty string or an empty list for that uh, so I'm going to iterate over uh, my elements to get the instance base um, Parameters. So I'll go ahead and send in the elements uh, that are that were sent in, uh, and I'll use the I, and then I'll create one more for loop. So I have a loop within a loop. The first loop is going over the elements. The uh, second loop is going to go over the parameters within the element. Uh, so I'm going to look for uh, J in my I, which is my uh, element, and then I'm going to look for each one of the parameters. 
So I'm going to do a conditional if statement. So if my um, j, which is now the uh, parameter, um, is shared and uh, the definition name equals the parameter, then it will um, step into this next uh, piece of code which will get the uh, the parameter j and the uh, unique GUID from it and send the, the value of the parameter value back to uh, my parameter value uh, element and then I will uh, add this to my empty list and I'll send it in as a string so that the output is string based um, and now I'm going to get my type based um, parameter. So for this one, I have to get the um, type ID. And then I'm going to look um, if the ID of the element ID is invalid, then the family type um, that I'll, I'll add to my list will be none. So, so if it's not a valid family, it, it will will not be put onto my list. Um, but if it is a, a valid family, I'll do an else, and then I'll get from the document, I'll get the element, and then I'll get the ID, um, and add that family to, to my list. Uh, so these are built-in parameters, uh, which are um, most of, I think all of um, Autodesk family parameters, uh, and they all have very unique names. Uh, the one built in that I'm getting is all model type mark. Um, and you can find a website that has them all listed out. Uh, so I'm going to loop over the uh, families and I'm going to get the type mark um, and I'm going to get the parameter from my built in parameter uh, from Autodesk. And I will add that type mark as a string. Uh, so that all my all my list is a string, and then I'll go ahead and send out the um, uh, the list, and I'll do a little bit of cleanup here. It looks like my unwrap is it's supposed to be lowercase instead of uppercase, um, uh, and then I will open up Dynamo, get a little get my walls send in my categories, send in a string parameter, and then I'll paste in from Visual Studios there, and I'll go ahead and run that, and it gets my uh, parameter, my instance parameter, and my type parameter from the wall. So setting parameters. The uh, great part about setting parameters is we've already generated most of our code. Um, there's actually a very simple set, um, and I'm going to go ahead and set one of these uh, parameters for the APZ. So I'll start by removing some of the excess Git code, and I'll get rid of the type-based one. And I won't send anything out, out for this, because I'm actually just uh, setting a parameter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lookup parameter, which attempts to look up uh, a parameter by its name. And the one I'm going to look up is the APZ uh, status. And then um, in order to set a parameter, I have to do a handshake with Revit by doing a, a transaction. Um, so I'll start my transaction and I'll ensure uh, the transaction with the document. And then the parameter dot set and then whatever I want to set it to. So I'm just going to put something setting a parameter into it as a string. Um, I'm sure you'll find some more sophisticated things to to add to your to your code. But this is a very simple example. So get rid of some of this excess code. I'm actually all I need to do is one uh, iteration or I need to loop over the list of elements, uh, get the lookup parameter and then do a transaction to set it. So I'll just copy and paste that there. Um, I'll drop it in. 
I hit accept and then I'll run that to set the parameter in my walls. Uh, so grab a wall there. It looks like setting a parameter has been put there. And same here. So looks like it worked. Thank you for watching. For more uh, Revit API videos, um, please subscribe.